Oh, well, we're going to come to our special guest now, who's probably just spat coffee all over her monitor from the photo I chose. <laughs> you suck, Paul. Get that on YouTube. <laughs> oh, it's going to be there. So this is our warrior princess, Justine, who's going to talk to us about accessibility. So I'll stop repeating so you can take over. Okay, so um, today or this evening, I'm going to be talking to you or sharing with you about using photos to map function and accessibility. Um, I want to start by saying I'm certainly no expert. Um, I'm just learning um, on a learning journey. So um, hopefully I can share some of my learnings with you and you can share some with me. Ding. So um, this evening, I'm going to be talking to you or asking you why do people use Google Maps? And then uh, having a think about um, using photos to make Google, Google Maps more functional and also using photos to increase accessibility. Next slide, Paul. So why do people use Google Maps? You can uh, turn on your microphone to tell me or you can type it into the chat window. I'm interested in um, knowing why do you use Google Maps? Why do you think people use Google Maps? Hello, Justin. Can I come in? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Probably personally, I'm a, I'm a traveler. Most of the times I'm on the road and I, I don't like the idea of asking directions from people. So most yeah. of the times I get my direction on Google Maps and it, it gives me the directions without any difficulties. So probably I use Google Maps to see places in advance and to get directions. Fantastic. Yeah, me too. I'm very directionally challenged. So <laughs> that's why I use Google Maps. Yep, to search about a place and see what it looks like and what all is there. Um, the reviews of a place, um, to look for places to eat mostly, that's Jessie, um, for navigation and which places to visit. Great. Next I, slide. I use it to see, I use it to see where accessible bathrooms are. <laughs> Do you really, Max? Well, if I have a friend who is, has low mobility, uh, yeah. that really helps them. Yeah, fantastic. So it's helping you to plan, isn't it? To plan ahead. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you. Next slide, Paul. Okay, so it's to do all those things and it's also to find the places worth visiting and the things worth doing. Next slide, Paul. Can I just interrupt there for a moment? Sure. Did you know that this is actually the Google Maps and Local Guides mission statement? Yes, I do. Have you ever seen it published anywhere apart no. from when they showed us on one slide at Connect? No. <laughs> yeah, good luck finding it. I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> but that's the whole point. It's like, um, it's like uh, what is it, Starbucks, right? Like they never pa uh, publish their mission statement, but um, people know it. Yep, it's the impossible mission. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so aesthetically, which do you think is the better photo? So the one on the left or the one on the right? You can either say it or um, put it in the chat window. Uh, the left one? You think the left one, okay. I just think the aesthetic, it looks, shows the aesthetic of the whole store better. Yep. Right, I left, think, right. I like yep. the right one better, aesthetically. Yep. Okay, right. great. So right we've got, seems we've got... fairly popular, but there's a few going for the left. Okay. Paul, can you go to the next slide, please? Sure. Which one helps you to know that you're in the right place? The left one. Left one. Yeah. So thinking about the functionality of maps and the reason that um, a lot of people actually use maps is to find where they're going. So putting that frontage photo in there, um, especially if there isn't, like Paul said, um, a 360 Street View app, can actually be really helpful for people um, because if they've got their map out and they're wondering, you know, where they're going and they're looking at it and they're thinking, gee, have I reached the right place? They can actually have a little bit of a look and say, yep, that's the place that I'm going. Um, just as a little side note, I actually didn't know that you're not allowed to take photos in some shopping malls, but no one's ever said anything to me, interestingly, 
oddly enough, when I've had my camera out. Um, and I've taken photos in lots of shopping malls um, because I find that um, a lot of them don't actually have photos of the front of their shop. Um, and I think that's pretty helpful um, and useful for people. So I actually take a lot of those. And when I was in Melbourne, um, particularly at Fountain Gate, which is a massive shopping centre where thousands of people go, um, there were lots of stores that didn't have any photo of their shop front which I thought was really interesting because then it just has like that blue picture on Google Maps and doesn't look very nice. So, yeah. Next slide, Paul. Well, your face looks nice and sweet and innocent. You don't look like a creepy old man, which is probably why you get away with it. Correct. And I'm sure. And I just smile. <laughs> just as a side note, everybody should Google, not now, but do it later, Google Kath and Kim Fountain Lakes and you'll understand <laughs> that suburb perfectly. <laughs> So um, I guess what I'm saying is it's not about um, putting one or the other on, as Paul was saying before. It's just an opportunity that if you're not currently, if you're only taking photos when you're inside somewhere, like a restaurant taking a photo of food, um, it might be interesting to think about also taking a photo of the outside. It might not look as nice to you or, or as interesting, but it might be um, helpful to people. Okay, next slide, Paul. So frontage photos help people find the right place. They assist businesses and they can also increase your contribution to maps. And most of you probably know, but I didn't for a long time, that you can actually load a photo without doing a review. Um, so that can be really helpful too. Um, this is actually my second most viewed photo on maps and it's just um, the front of Rebel Sport. Yep. Although maps will probably bug you to do a review because it thinks you've been there. Yeah, it does, but I don't do reviews of places that I haven't been, so. Yep, none of us should. <laughs> Next the, uh, one. The other cool thing about these entrance yep. photos is from an accessibility perspective is they show you whether you can get into the shop or not. Yeah. And inside a modern shopping mall, it's pretty unlikely that you can't because particularly in Australia and in the US and in most of Europe, they actually have laws about whether you can get into a shop or not. And they all have to, they don't have a choice anymore. They actually have to, but there's a lot of older places there where you still can't and they get away with it for, I think the next couple of years. So looking through the lens, lens of function also helps us to consider accessibility. And there are certainly, um, that little picture there, there are some incredible local guides that do amazing work in terms of um, accessibility. And those are just some of the people um, in that photo. Jesse, is that, is that there Penny? Is that, is that Penny? <laughs> yep, that's yep. Penny. Go on, guessing competition. Let's see if you know who the others are. I think I can see Anya and Vikram as well. And I think that one's Ananda. That's Marine in the top right, but I don't think she's active as a local guide anymore. And there's Amika. Yep, yeah, Megan, Jess, yep, that's right. Megan, yep. Okay, next slide, Paul. Oh, people are going to be upset if we don't get the last one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it, is it, um, are you are still us? No, it's Bandana. <laughs> Close. At least I think it is. She'll shoot me if it's not. <laughs> <laughs> So I just want to explain the language I'm going to use. I'm going to use the word differently abled versus disabled. And the reason that I'm going to use the language differently abled is because there's a focus on strengths and abilities. So when I talk about differently abled people, um, you'll understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. Next slide. Okay, so one of the great things that you can do with photos is actually use them to um, help people uh, find out about accessibility features. So for example, um, this was a photo I took of a beach. Um, this is actually Four Mile Beach. No, I won't say where it is. This is just a beach somewhere. <laughs> and you can see that there's actually a ramp leading down to the beach. So I also used captions um, down the bottom just to highlight the fact that this was the ramp leading all the way down to the beach. So that's something that um, you might consider doing as well if there's something in particular that you wanted people to know about. Do you know did, you the the hashtag, did, you, did you use the hashtag one accessibility or just the hashtag one? Um, I used one accessibility, but I think they're getting rid of hashtags now. Um, Paul would be able to, to tell that. 
Yeah, hashtags used to be used to set the features of the place, but now what they're asking people to do is actually open the place and to choose the features that are relevant for that place. So there might be accessibility features or there might be food features or whether it's open or not, whether it's uh, currently accepting in-store shopping, whether they accept credit cards, whether they have um, contactless payment and things. Well, there's lots of new questions that are relevant to our current situation. So the, they are definitely giving of hashtags. Uh, do you know the new thing about captions? No. It's only just happened quite recently. But the, the newest thing about captions is if you're doing it on a PC now, um, you need to set the caption before you upload the photo into the photo metadata itself using whatever you're using to manage your photos. Oh, wow. Because Maps actually takes it from there. So in that example I had at the Botanic Gardens, I've got 80 something photos up there that all say Olympus Digital Camera because I didn't know about that feature before I uploaded them. Now I do. <laughs> and you can't change them once they're up there, sadly. Next slide. There you go. Yes, please. Uh, Je Jessica was saying something about hashtags. Do you want to? Jessica says, yup, hashtags don't work anymore. Um, so this is just um, a photo of a menu at McDonald's. But what I noticed was that there were some accessibility options down the bottom that I had never noticed before. So I've used, um, I've got a Google Pixel 3 XL. Um, so I've just used some of the editing software on my phone to put in that little circle graphic, highlighting it, um, and just putting the words accessibility options. Obviously, you don't want to do um, too much because you don't want it to obstruct the photo, um, but it can be helpful if you just want to point out that there's a certain feature. So that might be something that you, you might want to consider doing. Yep. One thing to be careful of if you're watermarking images like this is you're not allowed to do it on more than 10% of the image. It must be on an edge. So lucky you, Justine. And it's not allowed to be distracting. Mm. Well, that makes sense, right? Yep. Okay, next slide. So um, you can see that I've got a couple of photos here. The one on the left is actually another beach, but there was a beach wheelchair that you could hire here. So um, you can often capture these sorts of photos. You don't have to take a photo of this specifically, but it might be um, a broader photo, but you might um, frame it in such a way that you do actually get this information um, in there. Um, looking back on this photo, it also would have been really helpful to put the opening times. So if someone did want to hire a beach wheelchair, they would know when they could actually go to do that if they were planning to visit the beach. Um, and the other one is things, of course, like parking spots, but also with the um, differently abled parking spots, um, access to, for instance, things like being able to access the footpath. So is there a ramp close by? Um, is the ramp on an incline? Is there a heavy door at the top of that ramp? Um, is someone who's differently abled going to be able to open that when they do get to the top of the ramp? So thinking about the next step, not just the differently abled parking or toilets. And I've got on there, um, so you could um, make notes of things like equipment available for hire, special features. Um, so like in a cinema, they will often have certain screenings, have low noise, low lighting or closed captions. Um, all the usual stuff, parking spots, toilets, ramps, lifts, rails, the layout inside as well as outside, um, and also the accessibility of the entire venue. So are there heavy doors? Is, are there steep inclines or declines? Or is there um, un, uneven ground that someone might have difficulty um, traversing? Next slide, Paul. And I think it's really cool that that particular place is really thinking of everyone because that path is for wheelchairs, irukandji jellyfish, crocodiles and sharks. <laughs> Yeah. Not yes. dogs. <laughs> yeah, beaches are very friendly in Australia. So um, I just had my top three fun um, top three tips on function and accessibility. So like Paul was say saying, take a range of quality photos, including the frontage, if there's not a 360 photo. Imagine accessing a place as a differently abled person. Um, being an able-bodied person, we have certain privileges that we probably aren't even aware of. The fact that we can see signs, the fact that we can hear noises, the fact that we can walk, for instance, up and down stairs. So sometimes I find for me, if I imagine what it might be like accessing that place 
as a differently abled person, then I, I can often think about, okay, what might be helpful to map? What could I take a photo of that might help someone if they were planning, for example, to visit this place with someone in a wheelchair or with someone with mobility issues or with someone with a child on the autism spectrum um, who doesn't like loud noises, for example. So think about the inside as well as the outside. And the third tip, it's certainly a different world before you move on to the third one. So um, last year I went to visit Penny in Sydney and we, we did a meet up naturally enough and I had damaged my knee and was actually in a wheelchair for that trip, which oh, wow. um, things through the airport was relatively smooth, but outside the airport was problematic. It was quite, quite actually difficult to move around. The attitude of people towards you is quite interesting and being able to find your way around and find places that you can get to was actually quite, it wasn't impossible, but it was hard. And the third tip is consider how captions, and as Paul was saying, and I didn't know and now I do, they have to be on your photo before you upload it, um, and editing software can be used to add helpful details, but do remember less is more. So remember those rules that Paul said. Yeah. So on PC, captions need to be on the photo before you upload. On phone, both Android and Apple, you can still set them after you've uploaded. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Good <-o. laughs> and the last thing that I wanted to end with was a call to action. So my call to action is, will you help every person on this planet not only find, but also access the places worth visiting and the things worth doing? Because, <laughs> yeah, big love heart. Because um, I think that, I mean, I'm like I said at the beginning, I'm certainly no expert, but I think just having an awareness and a willingness to want to do this is enough to start. Um, and once you start, then you do become more aware as you continue um, on this journey. So I'd encourage all of you, please don't feel like you have to be an expert. You don't. Just make a start. Thanks, Paul. No worries. Thank you very much for coming along. Thank you.